Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to take a look at what ZBrush is and what it can be used for. Now, this video here is intended for people who is pretty new to 3D. You might have heard about the name ZBrush, but you're not really sure exactly what it is. What this magical and amazing and weird software can do. And at times frustrating software. <laughs> and at times very frustrating software. So ZBrush is the industry standard modeling tool for uh, any kind of organic modeling. If you're doing like characters like this, or if you're doing, you know, whatever it might be in terms of characters, or any kind of game, any kind of movie commercial, ZBrush has most definitely been used if you're seeing a character. You can get into insane resolution where you're seeing that we can get up, like just literally doing the pores on a character. So this is not possible in, in any other software to this level when it comes to sculpting. It's really one of my favorite tools and both Mort and I have been working a lot with this professionally. When we were working as character artists, you're just sitting in ZBrush basically all day long. Yeah, and one of the cool things about ZBrush is that it's so versatile. So whether you're just building a character from scratch or you want to use it as a concept tool for characters, you can use it as a concept tool for environments as well. And even something like hard surface is also possible to be done in ZBrush. Yeah, you can really use all sorts of stuff. The cool thing about ZBrush versus um, other tools is that ZBrush relies on sculpting. If you've seen modeling in other, other 3D software, you're most likely using uh, like poly modeling, box modeling. You're really dealing with polygons, which is a fantastic way of doing it if you're if you're blocking out, if you're building a car or you're building a bottle, whatever it might be. But if you're doing characters, you really want to sculpt them. You want to have the artistic feeling of it, of actually of actually having like a handcrafted look of it. And one of the other differences with a software like ZBrush is that traditionally you probably use something like a mouse in Maya, Blender, 3ds Max or whatever to model things with, but the primary tool to work with in ZBrush is a sculpting tablet, you know, because it gives you that higher fidelity and it gives you just better control over your movements. It's kind of like, you know, if you're sculpting in traditional clay, you have your tools to scrape things away with and add more clay. One of the differences between this and other software as well is that you have to focus so much about uh, when it comes to the pure fundamentals of art. If you know about, if you know how to do figure sculpting, figure drawing, gestures, life drawing, all that, that is directly applicable. This is one of the most direct and um, just hands-on applications out there. You can you can learn everything there is to know about ZBrush in terms of actually getting started with it in like 45 minutes. We have a video on our YouTube channel about exactly that because you really need four to five brushes. You need to understand how the navigation works and you need to understand how to add more polygons or resolution to it. But once you understand that, you can really do anything in your imagination. The cool thing is that ZBrush sort of, he tries to mimic real life in a way, like the sculpting feel of sculpting in real life and, and adding detail. You're just doing it digitally. So like any other digital medium, you know, you have access to undos, you have access to symmetrical sculpting. So you only have to sculpt one side at, th at all. So everything mirrors over. There's a lot of versatile tools in a digital package like this that you don't necessarily find uh, in traditional mediums. And it's also being used in, in a lot of stages throughout the, the production. Like I mentioned before, like it can be used uh, the very early stages of concept art where you're not focused on topology, UVs, or anything else but the design. It can be used very earlier on, but also for you doing something like weapons or environment concepting, you can do that. Um, you can use it it's sort of in the middle of the production after you've done your retopology and you have a mesh tweak the mesh, tweak the shapes. And then also at the end of, end of this, the production pipeline where you add details, like Henning showed before, really crazy amount of pores, wrinkles. So it has its place throughout the production in, in many different stages. One thing though about ZBrush compared to other 3D software is that it's a weird one. <laughs> like it's, it's very different compared to a lot of other software. It doesn't really follow traditional conventions when it comes to what is a document? How do you save? You there are just uh, it's just very different compared to something like Blender or Maya, which means that it has it can do absolute magic, but it also means that 
it is the most frustrating software in the world to use at certain times. Yeah, it's it's kind of its own thing. You can't. It's hard to compare it to a traditional 3D software because it sort of operates outside of time and space, <laughs> basically. Uh, <laughs> does things in its own way, which which means that like getting up to a certain level. Like getting up to like a beginner level really quickly, you can do that, but you can you kind of have to maintain it. And getting really good in it, just like traditional sculpting, if you don't really have a background in that, that's still going to take you years. Like to be able to reproduce uh, anatomy and like creatures, faces, whatever it might be, you still need those fundamental skills. Like ZBrush isn't a magic tool that just allows you to create something amazing from from the get-go you still need the fundamentals yeah it's kind of like it amplifies your current skills if you can do amazing work in traditional clay or you can you can draw it then you're going to get to an amazing result in 3d even faster but if you're terrible you're going to get to a terrible result even faster it, it becomes very clear who has the, the good fundamental skills when it comes to ZBrush because you can't really hide it. You can't just add lens flares on top of it and, and hide it behind smoke. You can very easily tell when somebody is faking the anatomy and faking all of that. And for, for quick production assets that maybe are background assets or they're meant for previs, you know, you can even do retopology in in ZBrush with Zeromesher, that's an automatic retopology tool in there. You can do UVs in there with UV Master, and it's also being used for printing for 3D printing. You know, you can you can decimate your mesh, which means you reduce the polygons that are in your mesh, so it's easier to work with in other software packages. And with I think they're doing a lot of updates now to focus it more on 3D printing. I think that's coming more and more in the later versions. And this is something I've been doing a lot, like sending it back and forth from ZBrush to um, like a like a print to a printer, basically. And you print the figurines that you sculpt. So also for jewelry, people are using it a lot for jewelry as well, like making the molds in ZBrush because, again, you have that fidelity, fidelity and it's easier to zoom in and, and create basically a higher level or higher, more high resolution uh, piece of jewelry. This is the main forum for for ZBrush. Uh, the guys who make ZBrush is called Pixelogic, and this is Pixelogic's forum. This is ZBrush Central. And here you have a lot of amazing art. If you look at the top row here, you can see all the insane art being made with ZBrush. It's really interesting going back with this because you can go back years and you can see kind of the progression of CG, how it's improved over the years. And we can just check out some of the work made with it. Like this is an absolutely stunning piece. So what, where is ZBrush involved in this process? Most likely it is uh, when it comes to sculpting the head here. Maybe it's in when it comes to the texture painting because you can do all sorts of crazy cool texture painting. Maybe it's even been used to do some of the initial grooming of the faces, of the hair as well. You have a, you have a pretty decent um, tool called Fiber Mesh, we can, which you can use for all sorts of cool stuff. You might also want to use it. Maybe it hasn't been done in this piece, but like to break up the armor if you have massive, if you have like big scars in it or like it's been bashed up, you probably want to use ZBrush for something like that. We also have this piece here, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. You would use this to, um, you would use ZBrush here to do same thing, uh, just sculpt the character. You might also use it to create the tattoos on top of it here as well. And I don't think it's done in this case, probably Marvel's designer, but you could also sculpt the clothing here as well. Sculpting clothing is incredibly hard, so I advise you not to actually sculpt <laughs> it, but you can totally do that as well. So there are a bunch of really cool features in it as well, which um, one of them is uh, NPR, non-photorealistic -photo, non rendering. This just means you can get a really nice uh, like illustration look on it. You can get like these super cool 2D effects on top of your 3D model. So if you're an illustrator, this is a really powerful way of working. Yeah, it can be good for getting like a comic book look, for example. Uh, the NPR filters are pretty powerful because they're fully customizable, so you can tweak them to anything. There's a base NPR filter that you can start from and then you know go crazy and make your own styles that's the cool thing when you start working with something in 3d compared to doing it in 2d is that you have the asset from all angles you don't have to redraw it you can just reposition it from a three quarter instead of a profile view uh, slap on the npr filters and then you have a completely new drawing basically yeah it's being used more and more by concept artists if you're a concept artist today and you're not doing 3d you should really start to look into something like zbrush 
you can do all sorts of interesting things with this. Like how you can change this style with just a few clicks like this is, is amazing. It also has some really cool hard surface tools as well, which just means you can just come up with really interesting designs very quickly. Now these t these designs here or these models wouldn't necessarily be used for production right away. You would have to retopologize them. But just in terms of coming up with shapes, it's it's such a powerful tool. Yeah, and if like if you're experienced with booleans, that's something that ZBrush supports as well, especially when you're working with hard surface objects like this. Being able to place live booleans. Uh, using it with some arrays that you can instance across a mesh means that very quickly you can you can really you can work up an asset really quickly and you know if art director or director comes over to you and they want some changes to a model everything being live booleans you can just you know change it on the fly so yeah that's essentially zbrush for you like zbrush is an incredibly deep software which you can never really learn zbrush you can only get better at it you can only get used to zbrush <laughs> yeah but uh if you if you're interested in particularly sculpting characters or sculpting environments we highly recommend that you check out zbrush it's it's an amazing tool which really allows you to be super creative though it, it is it is also quite frustrating in the beginning because it's so different from all other tools. And we have a lot of free training here on our YouTube channel to get you started with ZBrush. So getting started with ZBrush, our introduction series is completely free and feel free to check out a lot of the other ZBrush videos because um, you know I think we've got every everything you pretty much need to, to get started actually. Yeah, that's by far the, the, the topic we've covered the most on our <laughs> channel here, that's, that's ZBrush, just because we've been using it so much and it's so much fun to use. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and also hit the notification bell as well to get notified every time we put out a new video. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.